What's going on guys, today we are checking out the UXG light. Let's get started. All right, so first we are greeted with the quick start guide, presumably. We're going to open this up. And here is the UXG light. And here's the power cable. And that is all that's in the box. This is wrapped even like an Apple product. All right, so here is the UXG light. It has a LAN port, LAN port USB-C restart or reset button, and that is about it. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I wanted to touch on the setup of this device. It was pretty difficult to set up because I didn't quite know right off the bat how it was supposed to be set up. Um, what I had to do actually, so just so you know, this is my WAN connection, this is my LAN connection. What I had to do is actually plug in the LAN connection to the WAN port. And this was because that was the only way to get the router to accept and like join the network. So that way it can be um, added to the Unify network application I am self-hosting. So maybe this is different if you're not self-hosting it, but I'm running this network application on a Ubuntu virtual machine. So it is a little different for me. So if you're having that adoption issue, then you just gotta make sure that you plug in your LAN connection to the WAN port just to get it set up. After it's set up, you can then flip it and plug in your WAN connection to the WAN port. All right guys, so we are now here in the Unify controller. I'm going to show you a few things that we have enabled. So this UXG light does support uh, IDS and IPS. That are these settings down here. So suspicious activity is IDS. It is detecting the suspicious activity if you have it on Notify and Block. Um, and then we have IPS, which is detection sensitivity. So it is going to actively block threats to your network. So I'm going to set this on high, and you'll see why here in a second. We're going to go over here to our speed test. This is um, a slightly odd network configuration, but I can assure you that it does make sense in my head. <laughs> Basically, the UXG Lite, instead of getting a WAN connection, it is currently getting a double NATed internet connection, um, and it is routed to a subnet that I have a speed test server on. So we are still testing the throughput of the firewall on this device, um, but it is not to the public internet. Just so I have a baseline of exactly what to expect when testing the public internet. Um, my internet connection for my fiber provider is not super consistent, so this is a method that I can use to ensure I have a consistent 1 gig connection. Because the switch I'm connecting the UXG Lite to has a 10 gigabit per second fiber connection to my core switch, and so does my server. So. I can assure you that my server has up to 10 gigs of speed, so this is essentially testing the maximum throughput this UXG Lite can do. So we're going to run a speed test here, and we're going to see what we got. It should be pretty much 1 gig. So this, yes, as you can see here, this shows that this device does support 1 gigabit per second IDS and IPS. Um, what's odd though is like every time I tested this the upload speed was always slightly lower even when testing to the public internet It was slightly slower. So as you can see here. I'm not getting a full 1 gig to the internet um, But it is still pretty close I'm not sure why my fiber provider doesn't like it's not super consistent like I said so That is that but that is not the only thing I'd like to test in this video so now after the speed test finishes, we are going to move on to something else I wanted to try. Okay, so just for a comparison, we're going to turn off the IDS and IPS. So we're doing that by turning off suspicious activity and detection sensitivity. We're going to leave that off, and actually we're going to even set that off there. Just completely turn that off. So now we're going to go back here once this provisions, and we can check that status here. As you can see, it's still getting ready. I'm going to wait just to make sure that it is actually turning it off. Okay, so you can see the green light there, it is ready to go. We're going to run another speed test just to make sure it is the exact same speed. And there you go, it is pretty much the exact same speed. So no matter if you have IDS and IPS on or off, you will get the same internet speeds, which is fantastic because that means you can still run the UXG with the firewall um, capabilities on but not have to have lower speeds on your network because of that. So I was able to also get my hands on a Unify Security Gateway, the USG3P, and I'm going to test the USG3P to see if I can hot swap it from the network, from the USG Lite to the USG3P. So I'm not sure the process of this, but we're gonna figure out the process because I think the USG Lite is actually a fantastic hot swap replacement for the USG Pro. So I have a bunch of client sites that I work on where they have UXG Pros as their router, but if they could have a cheap $130 router as a backup just in case 
their UXG Pro dies for some reason, this is a fantastic cheap insurance for that to get them up and running and pretty quickly. So we're going to try this. It should be the same adoption process, theoretically. We should just be able to plug and play, and we should be off. All right, so to test the ability of hot swapping this device, I have plugged in the UXG to a Unify switch right here, and the switch is just switching the connection, obviously, uh, and providing a connection here to the USG. So there is two routers on this network right now, but this is actually the USG's WAN port. It is not the LAN port. So I'm going to see if that's what it takes to get it to adopt. The issue with my previous setup was that I could not get any DHCP on the network without having this router connected. So obviously we need something to route the internet connection temporarily so I can log into the Unify controller, adopt the new device, etc. As you can see, we have a pop-up here from Unify Network saying that we can only have one Unify gateway at a time. So if we want to adopt the device, we're going to have to remove the old next-gen gateway light. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to scroll down here, go to the device, remove, and confirm. Now we are just going to wait for the USG3P to appear for adoption. And at that point, we are then able to adopt the device into Unify Network. Okay, so now we're going to click to adopt the USG3P. It is now adopting, and the adoption has failed. How wonderful is that? So you can see the gateway is unable to connect to the internet. So now we're going to go to configuration over here on the left. We're going to say WAN DHCP 10.143.2.1. And we're going to adjust our range 10.143.2.2, 10.143.2.250. HTTP, we're going to paste in our controller here, and we're going to say slash inform. And it wants port 8080 here. All right, so now that the LAN IP has changed, we're going to switch back over our network. We're going to reconnect the USG to our network as well. All right, so just like that, we have adjusted the IP address of our router. And this was because we have switched the default subnet of the router. That was the issue why it was not adopting. So now that we have switched the IP address of the router, it is now good to go. And it is adopting. So. I wanted to see though, so let's say this is now our primary router. I wanted to see how easy it is to switch back to the UXG Lite um, because I was talking about having a hot swap gateway and for it to be fully hot swap it needs to be a lot smoother than the process we just went through. So this is our current setup right now. We're waiting for this to update. Um, this is the UXG Lite and I did want to show you this is pretty similar to an Apple TV in terms of size. It is almost identical. Um, it's a lot thicker though. Um, but it is, yeah, pretty much just dead on in terms of size, which is really interesting because the um, Unify Express just came out yesterday as of recording this video. So it's interesting to see that Apple or that Ubiquity is taking a similar approach to Apple in terms of their product naming, just like the Airport Express, and their product like design because it does look very similar to an Airport Express, which Apple used to have. All right, so as you can see, we could not apply the gateway configuration changes. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. Um, all I know is that I'm not going to continue messing with this, and we're going to adopt the UXG Lite. Now that it is up to date, we are going to move the LAN connection to the LAN port, plug back in the WAN connection. All right, so there we go. We are now back with the UXG Lite. All right, so that was just a quick look at the UXG Lite. If you have any questions or want to see anything else done with this router, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Reach out to my website. You can ask any questions on my website. I will get back to you as soon as I can. So like I said, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next video.